My dad is watching football. He sees the screen half time. That's my boy. Yeah. Garner viewers, those viewers build interest, interest brand, boom. And I think it's important to showcase black love, mm. black relationships, black intimacy. Hey guys, welcome to SA Film Chronicles. My name is Eddie Ramatlale and I'm the founder and producer of SA Film Chronicles. And welcome to our one-on-one -on -one interviews with South Africa's most handsome man, the ladies call you, <laughs> Mr. Tafel Mukana. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Bro. Yeah, and just a bit of an intro for, 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 for Tapelo. Um, Tapelo's, this is quite a long intro by the way guys, because I mean, your filmography, you've done quite a lot, I've yeah. got to say. Um, so, Tobelo is one of the most talented actors. He's also a producer, TV presenter, and a very business oriented man. And he's a CEO and founder of Bakwena Brands, and a uh, which is a male grooming cosmetics company, and also Easy Sunday's film production company. Also, an after graduate, and uh, the founder of Young Producers Forum. And you've partnered with various brands like Malitva, Nero, Tabak, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're also a TV star known for Generations, Aye Aye, Broken Vows, Trackers, Bulletproof, Pulse, Blood and Water, Kings of Joburg, and now Fatal Seduction. <laughs> and then some of the films that, you, that you've known for is uh, Mandela Long, Walk to Freedom, Mrs. Right Guy, Angelina, Beauty of Africa, A Royal Surprise, and Between Friends, just to name a few. Like, I've got to say, bro, do you have a rest? <laughs> do you have a rest? Ish, bro. You're always busy, man. This is, I'm getting rest just sitting here talking to you. This is good. Yeah? A chair. Yes. Comfortable chair. Comfortable, you know, nice and relaxed. It. Yeah. Yeah. This no, is, man, awesome. It's, this, it's, is, um, this is probably day one of my proper rest. Oh, uh, man. In, in two years. Wow. Yeah. And you're joining us here today. And we can do this, yeah. Oh, man, awesome. Yeah. Like, yeah. nah, that's great. How, how, how are you doing? How are you actually doing? I'm good, man. I'm alive. I'm home. Mm. Um, so I'm at peace. Yeah. It's nice to be home. Yeah. It's nice to come, you know, it's nice to have familiar things around you. Your people, your old couch, yeah. your ruggedy ass, cushions, whatever, you know, the stuff that you know, mm. the stuff that you're comfortable with, the stuff that you don't have to think twice about. It's called home for me, so I like coming home to rest. I'm in my rest mode. I've got at least two months of downtime, I've decided. Oh, good. I don't care what comes up. I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, so I'm, I want to just really, really like absorb family time and physical time and touch and yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, right now, like you know, you're trending everywhere with fatal seduction. Yeah. And how's how's the how's the how's the feedback from you know and the the response from the audience been so far? It's crazy. Fatal seduction yeah. feedback is madness. Like, yeah. Uh, I've been back home since Sunday from finishing another Netflix production and Fatal came out on Friday. So just like looking at my phone since Friday is all I've been doing. <clears throat> Obviously quite excited to see the momentum. Um, also very excited to be wrapping a show while releasing another because it means I can immerse myself in the mm. moment. And, and, and journey with the audience member because that's who you do it for. Yeah. You know, it's like music. You don't release it for yourself. You release it for... For the people. people. To consume. So it's like people are eating. Yeah. And, and maybe we the chefs and we, we're watching from above just going, oh, the plate is finished. There's another one. <laughs> so for, so it's, 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 it's such a special feeling and I think every actor in their life dreams to have content or shows that make people want to go back for more, that make people mm. want to be, want to be immersed, that make people want to binge, you know, yeah. so it's a good feeling, and I think, yeah, props to, to the team for that one. Yeah, and you grew up in Ladysmith. Yes, uh, well, beautiful, born and bred. Born and bred there. Uh, and, you, and you were born, like, yeah. people, many people might not know this, but you were born in a tree. Yeah, okay. And, and it's not, unfortunately, it's not there anymore. I know it's yeah, been yeah, taken they away. Yeah, chopped the tree down. Yeah, yeah. I, I treasured this tree. I've been going back. When I go home, I go to my tree. Mm. I call it my tree of life. 
Oh, yeah. like four years ago, I think four or five years ago, just before COVID, mm. I went home one winter and, and it wasn't there. Must have been a cold winter. Yeah, the tree was gone. It was like a little stump left. Mm. I tried to protect it as much as I could. I tried to. I was talking to the mayor. I was like, "Yo, listen, we should do something. I think I'm gonna be great. <laughs> Save this tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like put some fences around this tree. Do something because I think." I think I think I'm gonna go all the way, you know, like, mm. and, and I think as as it would be, it didn't happen, mm. or maybe they thought I was crazy. <laughs> they were like, "I man, when I wait, we've we've got ladies with black mamba, so just mamba and man." <laughs> but um, yeah, the tree is, is gone, and I, was, I I really I was like, you can't exactly be mad at people wanting to make fire. Mm. I went and asked, who mm. cut the tree? Mm. What happened? Locals, you know. In the rural areas, in the the on streets like normal streets here, it's, it's just like in Daba, so it's mm. like. <clears throat> and I went to one or two houses. I go, oh no no no, slogan just is gang like I'm running around in the stars. Oh, I feel good band, you know it's winter. It's like yeah. survival. So, yeah. <laughs> so if, if the tree's gone because people need it to survive, mm. it's all good. But like that's still my center. That's still my core. I still go there. I pray. My umbilical cord was. Oh. Was, laid, was was rooted there, so it, for me it's not just a mm. tree. It's like it's it's nature. It's being connected to the ground in so mm. many ways. You know, mm. I didn't make it to the hospital, but I'm here. <laughs> but you, yeah, and you speak about greatness. <clears throat> and I mean, you know, when you were young, young, uh, when you were young, growing up, I know you used to like mimic. Uh, TV shows and mm. DVDs that your parents would That's get you, you at, at, at home. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of your, your escape. But yeah. did you ever imagine, you know, at that tender age, that you would be one of South Africa's most legendary actors? Wow, legendary is big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm only starting, bro. <laughs> but, uh, I, yeah, dare to dream, right? I, I've, I've pictured it a million times in my head as a child. I've played around with the idea. I've, toyed around with the thought, I've, 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 pay, I've fantasized about, I'm sure every actor goes through this, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sure every actor f has that moment when they, they, they're in the environment and they just like, what would my Oscar speech be? Or what would my Emmy speech be? Or, you know, you watch the Emmy, yeah. you just, you daydream and then you see yourself standing there saying something. And you start thinking about, oh, who would I thank? Who wouldn't I thank? What would you ask a speech be? No, we're not going to do that. Okay. No, <laughs> not really for that. But I, one day. When that happens. When we, it happens. We'll know what that is. And we'll but, come back to this moment. Yes. But yeah. I just, exactly. But I just think, <clears throat> in my many dreams as a small town kid, Okulema Plaza in a small town, not from the city, hearing about the city, not having been to the city, not knowing the skyscrapers, Tallest building in my town is probably eight floors, maybe more now. Mm. Maybe there's taller buildings, but I grew up knowing that the tallest building I remember the flat was an eight floor building where wow. for until metric. That's shallow. Eh? That's all I knew. One main road, Murchison Street in Ladysmith. That's all I knew. One more, one, not even more. We called it a mall. It's a shopping center. Mm. In five minutes, you could walk from the beginning to the end of it. That was big to us. So, for a kid who grew up like that only wishing to finish school so they can go take over the world and see more because you watch TV and you know there's more. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like, what's the drive? And I think, I didn't think I'd be here, like, but I, I know I, there was a longing inside of me to just want to play yeah. with this thing. You know, I didn't know how to articulate it. I didn't even know I could study it. In fact, I didn't think I belonged because it felt mm -hmm. like another world. <clears throat> until you grow up and then you realize, oh well, you know, you can become this. There are channels. I didn't know then, that's why I went to accounting school. Yeah. When I finished my trick. And then you moved over to, and, and then we studied film. And then when I got to the city, I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> it's not accounting, this is not it, I'm lost. Mm. And I've, I've been to a school down the road from Vitz that looks like, it houses people mm. that look like how I feel. You know what I mean? Like one break, I took a walk with a friend. He said, come, let's go to this art school down the road. Let's go see what's there. Maybe there's nice girls. Maybe there's this, there's that. You never know. Mm. You know, I was a student. So I was like, yeah, let's get it. Mm. And walking into after for me was a, a, a big 
gush of wind, like, whoa, who are these people? Hmm. Why do they look like this? Why do they look free? Yeah. Why do they feel, who, what? They're creatives. They're creatives. They're storytellers. They hmm. are, wow, what do they do here? You can do that? Hmm. You can study performance? You can, you can stage? What, sound? Like it's like a new cats. world. It's like a whole like new world for you. So now I'm connecting the dots. I'm like, oh my God, the stuff that I... The stuff we used to do at home with my brothers after watching a film, Karate Flick, I'm sure all of us did it. You go outside and you feel like you're Bruce. You suddenly want to put on your clothes, find something in your wardrobe that looks like that little karate outfit and you're out there, right? Because you're so influenced. So mm. in the same breath, I was just like, so many things are going through my head. Like, oh my God, I hate accounting. I'm struggling anyway. I've never liked it. I just chose it because I needed to get out and now I'm out and now I'm here and it's not it. And this is it. How am I going to pitch it? What are they going to say? Da, 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 da. You know? And then I went back and I went back and I, and I was like, this is what I want. I want to be like them. I want to feel like these people. And, and you know, my parents obviously shut their idea down. And it wasn't, it made no sense to them. They were like, you crazy, you mad. No, no, we'll get you extra lessons. You'll get a tutor. We're not doing that. Your cousin is an actress. She's always, you know, going on about how tough it is sometimes, you know. And, and I was like, yeah, but I, I feel like that. That's how I feel. I don't like these numbers. I feel like no stats. I want that, Yeah. you know. And eventually, um, God is so good. I got my first assigned with an agency around that time because now it was in me, this thing. I knew I could. Yeah. And um, friends of mine were doing modeling stuff. They were like, yo, man, you got this hair. I had an afro. <laughs> yeah, so cool, you cool. I had no beard. You should try an agency. You never know. Then I went to Rosebank, found store models. They signed me up immediately. I said, oh, okay. Yeah. What do I need? You know, and yeah. suddenly I was doing this thing without my parents because they were just like, no. And I tried to raise money, 350, get a Z card. Oh my God, I got a card. Now I'm looking at the face on the wall. I'm like, oh, I've seen that guy in an ad. I've seen it. Oh, shit, I'm one of them. Okay. My first audition was a Sprite, if not second, a Sprite commercial. First. First, yeah. Sprite, Sprite commercial. commercial, yeah, yeah. For an extra role. I didn't even know what an extra role was. I mm. was like, they've called me, hi, I'm here. Just yeah. hopping on a film set and Sh let's shoot this. Boom, you know, like, I'm here to feature extra audition. And then the director on that job was like, you the lead. Ooh. I was like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> what's the lead? I'm like, no, yeah. no I, didn't, I didn't, I came here last, I didn't lead the, like, the lead. <laughs> oh, no, you know. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 you, you, uh, wait, do we have your details? I was like, yes. Who's your agent? Store models. Okay. Nikki. Yes, Nikki. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you. See you soon. I was like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. I left and I got a call that I'm shooting this thing. I didn't even understand the language. Like they said, I'm a leader. And that's where it started. You know, like mm. suddenly I was a leader in a spike commercial. While I was in film school, I made money off that and... I was like, how much you pay me? Like 27,000 at the time, I think like 30K. I, didn't, I was like, you are throwing me, you are sending me to Vegas. Was that your first big paycheck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you are now sending me straight to, you know, I'm going yeah. to Vegas. I'm, I'm balling, I've, I've made it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, and that's when, um, just to close that story, yeah. to loop it, that's when I, I called my parents to say, don't worry about school fees. I got it. I'm going to take myself to film school. I think this will cover the first year and a half. What do you mean? Where are you getting the money from? I think I'll, no, I no, just there's some jobs I'm doing. I'm doing this stuff called commercials. They're like, what? You know, <clears throat> then I get my second commercial. Then I get my third commercial. And as my third commercial is being shot, my dad is watching football in yeah. the stadium. And one of our football clubs is playing. Free State Stars. Free State Your Stars. Your dad's the chairperson and owner of Free State Stars. Founder, founder. Yeah. yeah. Founder as well, yeah. yeah. Founder of the National Soccer League of our country. Mm. One of the founders. Mm. Yeah. So he's watching and he sees the screen, half time, there's this ad playing on screen. He's like... That's my boy. He's like, that's my son. Yeah. And then just like, 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 you know, like a high rotation ad during a big game. Mm. I can't remember who we're playing, but he played 
two times, three times, but the fourth time, apparently he called my mother from the stadium. And that's like, yo. What's going on? Like, hey, <laughs> and he's trying to connect the dots now. Like, and then I didn't have a cell phone at that time. There were no cell phones, really. I remember I had a spare phone with no SIM card that my mom had given me. But mm -hmm. it wasn't the era of cell phone. So I didn't have a SIM card. And then he called the flat that I stayed in, the caretaker, to give me a phone. Son, can you imagine? Yeah. Oh, son, wow. Hey, man, hey. Hey, you doing, you know, like, as a parent, like, I'm like, oh, he sounds happy. Mm. Oh, shit, he's proud. Mm. Oh, my God. He's like, oh, this is you. you is, is this what you mean? Is that what you're speaking? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. And he's like, oh, man, okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay. No, no, no. Save your money. We'll support you. Oh, Just wow. Me. That was my dad, like, you know. God rest him. He was just like, yo, okay, okay. Okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I just, okay, just, we'll, let's see what we can do. Mm -hmm. Let's do next year, let's see, maybe, you know. Because now we could see what I was trying to articulate that I couldn't articulate. And then he funded my, my second chance, which was film school. Yeah. That's what we had. Wow, man. Mm. That's really inspiring. And I, I can relate to that story so much. Because I think, mm -hmm. you know, to, to a certain extent, sometimes, you know, like with African parents, when you tell them that you're going into the arts industry, it's always like, oh, like, uh, right so. no, it's like scary and I mean like you're a father and you've got two sons as well and I don't know how you would feel about that if your sons had to say to you that like dad we, we, we want to do what you do dad we want to be an actor or we want to be a filmmaker or we want to be a musician or we want to be a dancer you know mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how you would feel about that and I mean I think also in terms of like your parents as well they have disciplined you in such a way I believe that you are one of the most disciplined people like uh, South African actors out there, or celebrities rather, if I could put it in, in, in that perspective, because I've never seen any controversy, I've never seen any scandals or anything of, of, of that sort. Um, so like, can you just talk us through like, like how, how do you brand yourself as an actor? And mm. like, how, how do you manage to do it so well and be so successful in doing that? Yeah, it's a good question. I think it's, everything begins with yourself, right? You're the product, right? Like, yeah, an actor, is, a soccer player is, is the product because he has to kick that soccer ball around. You know, a tennis player is the product because he has to smack that little ball around until you get that Wimbledon final. In the same breath, my physical is the product and I have to manipulate self to achieve certain things, like to act, to perform, to pro maybe MC, maybe to to do a voiceover, to, you know, have to mold this product. So it begins there, mm. you know, by knowing that you're the product. The opportunity is not the product. The show is the stage and the platform mm. and the world where the product lives. So you are the product. Start by knowing that, I think, it's very important. And um, what does the product want? Why is the product here? You know, is the product here to gain fame? Mm. Sure, okay. That's, that's a want or a need for some, I don't know. Tick, if that box is ticked, maybe then you've reached your goal, all well that. But is the product trying to, you know, uh, explore emotion, explore humanity? If that's, the, if that's the plan, tick that. Is the product trying to go on a psychological journey mm. of life, but get paid for it and master that interpretation? Tick. Is the product trying to be one of the greatest? Tick. Is a product wanting, wanting to play on the biggest stage ever? Tick. So it's whatever you want. So once you've got those list, that list and you print that list out, that's your, that's your balance sheet, that's your re reconciliation document for yourself. Yeah. You always got to come back to this document and make sure that you still, the vision is still what you want or change the vision. So for me, I know what this is about for me. I'm a product that is there to translate narratives, stories, bring characters to the fore. Their triumphs, their weaknesses, their losses, their wins, um, human journeys, my choice of characters to the world. That's my first role and my first responsibility to myself as the business and as the product. And once I know that, then I know what I need to do to get there. Yeah. All the other stuff doesn't matter, automatically falls away. True. Mm. Everything else just automatically becomes not part of the vision, not part of the goal. Mm. You know, if for me, if I create a product that is going to take care of your beard, what is the purpose? 
This product is designed and manufactured and hand fabricated to give you the best beard possible. That's the mission. Mm -hmm. Anything in between, bread, juice, Coca-Cola, does not matter because it's not about that. So for mm -hmm. me, I cannot allow myself to get lost in it. I'm aware of what it is. I know what it needs from me. Yeah. It doesn't need me at every red carpet. It doesn't need me at every famous people event. It doesn't need me to get more, to, to seek more likes, to seek more click, uh, clicks or yeah. to get more trends. It doesn't need me. Clickbait. Yeah. Clickbait, that's the word. It doesn't need me to garner any of that because I'm okay with the product. I know what it, what it is that I'm doing, what I need. Mm. Emotionally, I feel like I'm okay. I don't need this industry to handle me emotionally. Yeah. I don't need this industry to build, raise my family. I don't need this industry to make, to give me a six pack. Who do I need for that? <laughs> me. But yeah. I, I, don't, I don't need that. But, you know, so I know what I need from it. Mm -hmm. What does it do? It does expose me to people. My industry puts me in the living rooms of people that don't invite me to their houses. So by virtue, I bulldoze my way into your house. By virtue, I don't have a choice. To some extent, I belong to you through my shows, through my content, through my work. So once I balance those two, I know who I need to be. I just gotta stay me. So mm. <laughs> it doesn't matter, bro. If I, I'll say hi. Yeah. Morning, hi. What do, what do I lose? Mm. If I think you're wearing a nice jacket, I think your jacket. Keep it moving. I don't. I'm not gonna think. Oh, I'm Tabelo first. I don't walk into pick and pay. Of course, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <careful. laughs> I don't, of course, I'm like. Oh. Of course, I'm thinking. Okay, lower the cap. Put the shades on. Just keep it moving. Walk briskly. <laughs> But I'm not like, I'm not like, I don't have to marry myself every time before I walk into an environment mm -hmm. because I already know who I am. You know, I'm okay with that. So there's a big saying, if you can walk into every room knowing who you are, then you don't ever have to follow what everybody in the room is doing. Or you don't ever have to feel intimidated, ever have to feel weak, ever have to feel like you don't belong in the room. I don't care if it's a room of billionaires and I'm like poor old me. If I walk into that room knowing who I am, my head will be tall. I'll shake hands like this, how you doing, sir? Nice to meet you. Yeah? Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Boom, I'm out. It doesn't have to be about everything, anything else. I don't have to feel inferior because people around me have more money or have more because I know who I am. Even when I'm in a weak position, yeah. knowing who you are and weak in a room is stronger than not knowing who you are and putting an, a, a facade of strength in the room. So at any given point, if I came here tired, I would have been telling, I would have told you I'm tired, but we're going to make it happen. It's going to be a great interview. You know, if, you know it's just, that's what it is. It's a, it's a human being that has to play these roles. Yeah. It's a human being that has to partner with these brands. It's a human being that has to build this business, these businesses with people. Yeah. So if I forget that, then I'll, I'll, I'll start living and, and, and carrying and wearing a cape and being a superhero to you. Mm. I'll sit here and I'll flex my cape at you, you know, and there's a lot to flex about, but that's mm. not the point, right? It's, I'm not, I'm okay. And that's why maybe you won't read as much about me. And I'm hardly there, mm. you know, I'm hardly there. If I'm there, it's my show, or I'm supporting a friend. I don't need the red carpet. Humble man from humble beginnings. Eh? It's not even humble. Mm. It's got a, 20 brands behind me. Ooh. That picture is going to circulate with my great outfit, with 20 brands behind me, 20 yeah. logos that don't pay me a cent. Yeah. Who's, who's fooling who? What, for two free drinks and a meal? And feeling light? No. I know who I am. I'm optimizing on my 24 hours. Yeah. Any second of it that anybody takes from me is valuable. I've built that value. I've, 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 I've appreciated the value of the product. So I'm not going to allow uh, a, a red carpet glitz event that I pay expenses on the outfit for, for your and red they're, carpet. They are expensive, eh? Well, I gotta look fresh every Jeez. time. So yeah. I'm not gonna wear the same outfit I wore last week because I'm on your carpet. True. With your 20 sponsors and on your banner. Yeah. With me walking the carpet. They paid you for the event, those sponsors. All 20 of them. You the product, like you mentioned earlier. I've spent money at my expense to come to your red carpet. Mm -hmm. Who's winning? You and the, and, the, and the product, you and the brands, mm. not me. 
So, so, and that's, I'm dropping bars on you because you yeah. understand that this you is, really a, are. <laughs> this is, um, it, it, it's a, it's an economical exercise. This is economics. Mm. This industry, everything you touch, every touch point here is economics, right? You spoke to me, you, your brief said, don't wear branded clothing. I know why, I get it. But also, I understand the importance of me wearing what I like. But also understand the importance of giving the platform a slate and allowing brands to come on here and put money on your show to, to be on you. Because that's your model. You want brands to be attracted to SA Film Chronicles, this conversation, yeah. garner viewers, those viewers build interest, interest brands, boom. Right? Yeah. You're sending out an invoice. I'm glad to be part of growing that value through my conversation. I know that I'm, I'm ahead of SA Film Chronicles as a product. I know I command numbers as a product. But I, 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 the value exchange here is intentional. So, when the trailer for Fatal Seduction dropped, it caused quite a stir mm -hmm. on social media and a lot of people were speaking about like, oh, what are we going, what direction are we going in in the South African uh, film and TV industry? You know, we're just creating stories about sex. I mean, what's also with the other shows that had premiered earlier on in the year True. and also the end of uh, last year with other streamers yeah. as well. It was, you know, based on, on sex, and a lot of people weren't necessarily happy with that. Um, do, you, do, you, do you believe that our stories recently focus too much on that? No. Not at all? Not at all. I think maybe it's a season where intimacy was a big element in the, in the stories that came up. Maybe it just happens, you know, there's a season where a lot of action flicks come up. Mm. You know, there's a season where it's a lot of rom-com um, films. There's a season where it's a lot of Christmas films. Um, so I feel like we just experienced a season and time, and yes, we happen to be opening around a time where there'd been two, three other properties with intimacy and high sex content that came up. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, mm. every show is different. And um, what I particularly enjoyed about that entire frenzy was the fact that you know, I know the story yeah. that we were, we were bringing out, and I enjoyed the misconception, <clears throat> you know, because um, that's what creates that buzz for you, naturally. Mm. So it's, it's a, a hint of negative media, knowing that you're about to slam dunk on it. You know, it's, 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 such a, it's such a, once again, know what you have in your arsenal. Mm. You know, it goes back to, you'll see in our conversation, everything links back to the human, the product. Mm. Just keep that in mind. But it, it all goes back to understanding what you've created, understanding the project, you know, having chosen the project, understanding the importance of it, understanding what makes it more than just sex, more than just nudity, more than yeah. just beautiful brown bodies doing the deed. As you know, I'm sure it, you know, people can testify that once you watch it, the least you, comp you comment about is the sex. You know, so it's the power of storytelling and, and it's the power of audience perceptions. From that hint, everybody was like, oh, not, not, not more bums again, you know. Oh, no, another cloth cloth show, you, yeah, know? Yeah. you know. So it's cool, because then you're sitting there thinking, hmm, let's wait for game four, <laughs> as they would say in the NBA, you know. So, yeah. yeah. I enjoy stuff like that. Yeah, you know, because I enjoy choosing my scripts. I enjoy picking the jobs that I work on. I enjoy not doing it just for the check. Mm -hmm. I enjoy starving a little bit sometimes because I didn't take that job. Because when I do it, it's one that gives me sleep at night. I can go, it's okay. And you, you're quite picky about some of the jobs that you do, of course. Um, yeah, you yeah. have to be. You have, have to be. So, yeah. you have to make that decision. It goes back to the, to the groundwork. You know, um, I'm okay with not having sometimes. Yeah. Because that's the nature of my work. I'm okay with with not being on a job because it's not the one for me. I do that. Literally let go of three, four scripts. It's just the feeling is not right. Mm. I read the first page, I said no. You know. Um, um, and and not no in the sense that no, I'm no, I'm just it's not it. There is no excitement. It doesn't feel like I'm looking forward to this first day. 
In other words, I'm not at the right time for this project, or it's not the right project for my time. Yeah. You know, so I don't, I really don't suffer from, oh, they're not seeing me on TV anymore. I don't want to think, same way, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know. You don't not, suffer from Abandubazo T. Abandubazo T. Yeah. I don't suffer yeah. from that syndrome. I made peace with myself early on. I said, you know, look at what Denzel does. I've studied him and he picks his projects and every time it comes out, you like, you like, there's nobody else who could have played that character like that. <laughs> that, 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 that had to be Papa D. That, that's, yeah, thank you. You know. <laughs> and why? Because he's, he's, he's presented to you yeah. exactly how he wants you to consume him. He's presented to you the type of artist he is, the DNA of performer he is, the caliber or the fabric of, 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 of actor that he, he, he is. He has. Mm -hmm. It's clean. And, and it's, it's clean because you know exactly how to consume him. So you don't want to be confusing as well to your audience members or to yourself <clears throat> or to writers. Otherwise, they will swing you left and right. They will write everything for you and you'll take everything, but it won't mm -hmm. make sense when you watch the journey of an actor. And I want you, when you watch my journey, 21, 22 years in, 40 years old now, it's important that when you watch my journey, you watch it like how you listen to a Jay-Z album from one to the end. Because he's told you exactly how he's do it or how he was gonna do it. And every time he does it, and every album he tells you how he's done it. And then he moves on to the next album. And then he takes a five year break and then he drops something. But he tells you. It's like a book. If you listen to these lyrics, and obviously the streets is the world, but the product is Jigger, right? And if you read it, if you, if you listen to music of that nature, if you look at Puff Daddy's journey, if you look at Elon's journey, if you look at different people, like, uh, and you study people, Denzel Washington, all the gems are there, like the nuggets, the pearls are there. And then you look at their personal lives, how they invest their money or what they do with they with they with they with they found fame or found success or found windows of opportunity because that's what it is mm. it's a window of opportunity like a soccer player has a window to become top of the league and become the biggest mbappe in the world it, there's a window for All opportunity it. where he must train where he's season until he becomes so for me it's like it's, it's it's working my window of opportunity all the time and wanting it to give off a particular message. So if you want to come consume me, it's clear what you're consuming. And hopefully that reads, whether it's a brand or not, they must come knowing what they're consuming. Yeah. You know, it, um, it's been clear about the product. It's been clear about the product. From right? the and as, yeah. a, as an actor specifically, I'm in a season where, almost wrapping it up, almost another year, and then I think I'll lock it off and go back to another season. I'm in a season where I'm not playing the, the nice guys. Mm. The complete nice guy. Mm. The guy. The ladies guy. The guy. I'm tired of, you know, those briefs stopped a year and a half ago because I shut that down. I said, I'm not playing the guy. I'm not doing a rom-com. I've done two rom-coms. I've done 10 other types of projects that are not rom-com, but people will remember me most for the rom-coms because it's a popular genre. But I need to take control of that yeah. and mold how you must consume this artist. It's a key thing. You're very good at it, I must say. Thank you, you. You're very good at, um, you know, like how you put your character into a certain way that the, the viewer consumes it, mm. you know. And, I mean, in Fatal Seduction, you play uh, Judge Leonard Matlati. Mm -hmm. And what, 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 what sort of, where did, where did you... You know, give us a bit of a breakdown behind the scenes on, you know, the references that you and the, you know, the directing team at Oak Ray, uh Moving Pictures. Mm. Uh, yeah, just give us a, a bit of a breakdown on the, on the references to play that character. Where did you guys draw th those references from? And then also, I want to know, um, what have you taken from the set and shooting of Fatal Seduction and, you know, your, your relationship with Nandi Matlati? Mm. What have you taken from that, or what have you learned from that that you believe you can implement in your marriage? Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think with every character or story, there's a responsibility from both the production and the actor to 
research, to know, to make decisions, to go against some decisions, to ultimately come to a character. So at first, obviously, I'm presented a character. Yeah. This is who he is. This is what he is. Obviously, our show is an adaptation of a Mexican show. Yes. This is the show that it's based on. But, excuse me, don't look at that show. Forget about that show. We're telling an African story. We're going our own direction. Sure. With different types of people. And with that comes me. I go, oh, interesting. I like this guy. Why do I like him? He's not trying to be Mr. Ladies' Man, Mr. Like. So he's not, he's not what I don't want. Yeah. But he's complex. Yeah, yeah, sure. Maybe he's, he's, he's fairly good looking. And he's fairly, he dresses well. And he's powerful. He's highly achieved. I like that. You like that in anybody. Anybody who's, you like that in yourself when you're achieving, when you dress good, when you feel good. But he looks too good to be true. What's wrong with him? What's happening? What's on the other side of the coin? Yeah. Huh? Where's, this is light. I like the light. It looks pretty. On the other side of the light is the dark. I want to know more about the dark. That's when then I get interested and my eyes start lighting up like, okay, what are his weaknesses? What are his flaws? He looks too perfect. Oh, are we going to see those? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Then I'm suddenly like, oh, now I'm, I'm excited because I can actually bring something to this. Don't tell me to get dressed, try to look good and look clean. Mm -hmm. Then what, you know? Come fight, you know? Fight to look like Le Justice Leonard Maslati in public but go back into your home and become something completely different because shit is hitting the fan in your household. Mm. You know what I mean? So that gives me as an actor range, now I can go mad. And then I bring my ideas to the table, then they go, oh, we like that. And I'm like, no, actually, being a married man, da 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 da, -da. Suddenly you're drawing, art is imitating life. Suddenly you're drawing from life to borrow trinkets of what a married man and a married woman behave as then you add the layer of what is not so perfect mm. and what is perfect. And some of it is not me personally, but some of it I borrow from myself. And then what do I take from, uh, your second part of the question is what do I take from these type of stories or this world that we've created in Fatal Seduction? With every role that I play, I don't, it's not just a free service for you, the audience. I'm going through a journey of, ther a journey of therapy, without a doubt. Acting for me, I always say, is therapy. Mm. It's absolute therapy to get out of my own mind. Paid for. Mm. Full rate. To leave myself. And go be someone else. Yeah. And do you ever get attached to like some of the no. characters? Have no. you ever gotten attached to any new character no. role you've had? No, I don't. Because I do my homework. You know, it's not easy. By far, it's not easy. You know, some of the characters you feel on you every day. Some of it, you know, one of my co-stars now was telling me that um, they, you know, they got a Netflix series. It's her story. I'm not going to mention names, but she spent six months trying to get out of this particular character that she killed wow. on this show. And, uh, and, and I respect that. And I can get it because your body gets used to a particular form. If you're uncomfortable because you think your wife is cheating like Leonard, your body is tense, man. Mm. So you're not like this. You don't cheat like this in your house. You, mm. You're like this. Yeah? Because you want to understand. What you, everything is morning. Mm. So, so, so your body takes a strain. But if anything, if I draw anything from fatal seduction and the world and my character, because he's a narcissist, and he's the third narcissist I'm playing in a year and a half, in two years. I feel like I'm almost done with narcissists, but I've understood exactly what not to be as a man or mm. how not to be, you know? And I'm challenged to even not be that even more, to walk away from that type of behavior. Because why? Because I've studied a narcissist. I've studied what it means to be the little behavioral patterns, the behaviors of a narcissist. And I found that at times, I might have had little moments where I must have, I must have been narcissistic myself. Because mm. there's levels to this thing, right? So that character, Leonard Maslati, I say is a narcissist. I made that decision for him, hence I'm playing him like I did, because he is a narcissist. 
He's driven by power, hungry for success, and hungry for to be seen a particular way by people hmm. at the expense of his home. Okay, in the vo first volume that we've seen, we obviously feel that things are not going well for him. Mm. But there's a reason for everything. So for me, I'm looking at the little nuggets of what I'm bringing to my characters and I'm like, I do not want to be that guy when I get in my house. I'm not perfect. Of course my wife and I have our moments. Of course we're human beings. Of course there's, in relationship, there's ups and downs. But more and more, the more I play these type of characters, the more I'm like, Ugh. We men have a lot of issues to fix in ourselves. Yeah. We men have a lot of conversations to have. We men don't. It's understand. relatable. You're right. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. You, for everybody. Mm. I hope. You know, we men have issues with power and struggle. We men have issues around money and finance. We men have issues around sexuality. We men have issues around love. We men have issues around intergenerational relationships in our own families. We men have. We're never hugged. We're never mm. loved by our own men, fathers, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So ultimately, you see how I'm informing the character. His flaws are not his own flaws. Yeah. He's the reason people are the way they are. So I gave him this backstory that you will never see on the show because it's a backstory. I built this world that makes everything not enough for him in the backstory. So when you meet him, he's not like his brother Vuyo who's chilling in the hood, running his tub and happy. Yeah. He's flash, drives a big car, has the big house, has the fancy suits. Why? What are you hiding from? What are you overcompensating from? You know what I mean? So that's how I inform my characters. And that's how I know I should play that character. Yeah. And if you don't like me on the show, then I've played my character. If you have moments that you're not sure if you like me, job is done. Mm. Can't be on every show and everybody loves you. You know, that's not how the world works. Yeah. Even if you're the most amazing guy that walks in the room and every lady like wants to stop because you've walked in the room, there's one lady who's like, ah, no, I don't feel this thing, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't see it. Yeah. And it's okay because that's how life works. So I want that. But with respect because I'm, it's an art, I'm acting, I'm performing. So respectfully, I want you to judge my characters and not judge my person. Mm. Yeah, That's well put. Yeah. And a lot of people have been saying that I wasn't ready to see KG and Tabello like where doing on, the deep. On Twitter everywhere on social Twitter, media. social media. That's like, a, like that's they weren't a, ready to see us having sex because we married. Well, I think because you guys are such respected figures within the you know the entertainment. Oh, of industry. course, respected figures do not have sex. No. Exactly. No, how do it's my fault. So for some people, they were like, it's an uncomfortable watch. They're like, mm, why? Because because. In the, in, the real, in the real world, we are married, we, you can identify our significant others in our homes. Mm. Makes sense. Mm. They're audience members. You're allowed to feel so, uh, some type of way. Yeah. It's our responsibility to educate you and to teach you that we do those type of things in controlled environments, in, 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 with, with, with um, um, what do you call them, um, intimacy coaches, yeah. who are there to help us with the technology of cameras and the smarts of storytelling to make it look so real that when you watch it, you just like, oof, you even feel the feeling of, oof, I think he just, he just went inside her. Oh. Yeah. Mm. And to the point that you feel that, you can identify with that moment. And for us, it's about doing it in such a classy way and presenting it in such a, a professional, artistic way that there is no judgment of the storytelling, you know? Um, and that's the respect we put on our industry and in our vibe, you know. So understand, people are people and audience members should be themselves. If something is uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable. You know, I remember there was a time where growing up, two people kissing on screen was a big thing in, in our families. Mm. You didn't know what to do. You were like, oh my God. It would be awkward. It's like you're sitting there with your parents yeah, yeah, and it's awkward. Yeah. There were no cell phones there, so I'm going to go with my Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like... You waited for the ad break and then the ad came and then your mother would go, yeah, I'm going to my yeah. It's like, well, it's kind of a real moment. Yeah. I love you. Well, it's what people do. Or if it's a longer kiss, it's like what people do. But the moment that's presented to an eye that is not used to seeing that, of course you're naturally going to go, mm, I'm uncomfortable, switch this off. Why are they doing this? No. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to showcase black love. 
mm. black relationships, black intimacy on screen. Yeah. You can't understand intimacy strictly from a perspective of, of white actors because the industry began Western. Yeah. Right? I love Richard Gere. I love George Clooney. I love Brad Pitt. I love them. But I grew up seeing too much intimacy and love through watching w white Western actors mm. and the importance of experiencing that from my own brown people is so important holding hands, saying I love you, you know what I mean? Hugging, kissing, I'll miss you. These are not things we grew up hearing, but well, certainly not me. Yeah. So, Tabilo, you know, yeah. you we were just speaking about this off camera of how important it is for actors to know their lenses. And I think that's actually something that I believe some of our actors take for granted from, because mm. I'm a filmmaker, so I've taken from a filmmaking perspective, where for them it's more like, okay, know your lines, your script, you know, blocking mm. scenes that are done. Mm. But it actually goes beyond that. Yeah. How how well how well do you know your lenses? <laughs> Very well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're my life. They're part of my work tools. You know, um, as an actor, it's important to know what the shot is, mm -hmm. what the shot size is, and the lens has the potential or the capability to inform you of that before you, you know, you ask even. Of course, you can ask your director: Is this a close up? Is it a medium close up? Is it a is it an extreme close up? Is it a wide? Is, you know, that helps you understand where your performance is required from. Obviously, a tight lens is a close-up, so you can't do too much of that. You know this is more about this, you know, but if it's a wider lens, you know, you can maybe use your hands. In your performance, you can maybe fold your leg, and you know, you know it's, it just informs your performance better. And like I always say, on every set that I'm on with, uh, with young actors, older actors, I always say it without blatantly saying it, when I walk on set and I walk into a setup or a shot, um, I always ask what the cameras are trying to achieve. You know, it saves everybody the trouble. You know, I know exactly what I need to do when I turn into any camera shot. You know, and also, um, it helps you as an actor save everybody time and yourself time and save your performance, right? What they like to call a bankable actor is an actor who has a technical awareness of his set as well as a physical performance awareness. Because to marrying the two, you know what to do. If there's three cameras set up differently in different parts of the, the set, I know if I turn to that, it's a wide. I know how to use a wide, because I can suddenly be more free with my yeah. body movement. But if I turn back into my close-up, I have to know that it's a tight shot, and whatever emotion I'm communicating back there, it better hit home, kind of thing, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's crucial. It's like, it's like a stethoscope and a doctor. Why wouldn't you use one? Mm. How are you gonna get to know what the patient is feeling? It's the same with me, you know? And it's, 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 it's a 360 thing. You can either focus on in front of the camera where you belong, where you work, or you can just take cognizance of what's happening around the set and manipulate that yeah. to make you look even greater. And like I said, it saves time as well. It saves time. And, um, you know, uh, I always enjoy when I walk on set and I can see the crew has a sigh of relief on their faces because they know that we're going to finish or we're going to get through it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a validating feeling. It's, it's a personal feeling that I like to enjoy, you know, to the point that you have crew members who come to you and go, hey, man, thanks for today. Do you know why they're saying that? Why? They're saying that because you've made their day worth it. You've come prepared. Mm -hmm. They know their stuff, the sound, the boom is up, the camera's on. Yeah. By bringing your goods as a performer, every, there's a mental note every day, every job, every production, every release, there's a note of, what a saver. Next, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. Call you for more gigs. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I, I wanted to touch on a bit of uh, on the uh, Showtime King Shaga. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you of course part of that. How how how's that been coming along? That's it's done. Yeah. It's done now. Um, an incredible project. One of the, if not the biggest production scale I've ever worked on in my life. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. Is the biggest production that I've ever worked on in my life in terms of production scale, production quality. It's just the the mammoth nature of this project was such an incredible honor. You know, um, 
What a great project. Obviously, you know about the project not losing its home with um, Showtime CBS. Yeah, I'm sure you're yeah, aware of that. Yeah. <clears throat> and not having a home. Um, so, so, so we hope and pray that the show um, gets a home. I think the world deserves to see the global interpretation of Ushaga's story. Yeah. Obviously, it's in English because the target market for this one is the world and different parts of the world, different territories like Game of Thrones, like your avatars. Mm. And of course, we've got our Shaga Ilembe here, which is a beautiful project as well by Bomb yeah. Shelter and, and, and the DSTV team, Nomzamo, incredible project. And of course, knowing what the project is trying to achieve is a local audience um, 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 consumption, hence the vernacular. And I think they've done an amazing job of bringing that across. And, and when I flip back to, to the CBS Shaga, I always say, um, and I find maybe this is a personal thing, and it's just how people have views on situations. The day I heard was my last day on set, a week before production, a week and a half before production wrap. So my last day, <clears throat> the day um, I was going to say goodbye to everyone on this great project, was the day that I obviously didn't get picked up and the show was cancelled or canned from production. Um, um, was the day that I was you know, excited about, you know, I had some gifts for a few people, but that, that wasn't to be. But the first thing I said to myself was, well, at least we finished. Yeah, you know. You got the job done. We got the job yeah. done, we had shot the ending, and this, we had shot nine first, and now we're just completing eight. So we have our story. Mm. And then secondly, I was like, what job in the world will pay you top dollar for almost a year? to be around the best to ever do it in the industry, to be around the biggest filmmakers, and when I say biggest, I speak about the biggest industry, Hollywood, with you eight months of the year, know you by name, believe in what you bring into the table, literally, like, in awe of what you're contributing, yeah. and, and, and close off, and of course it's Showtime, of course it's CBS, of course it's, it's just the world. What job will come into your life and give you all that? and still give you an everlasting one-to-one -one direct relationship with the same people that write and work with um, your Antoine Foucault, Denzel Washington, da 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 the list goes on, right? Take that. Mm. And if you're a young actor, of course I'm more established, so it didn't burn me as much, and I, I kind of feel like what needs to happen will happen. At some point, people will see that show. But the sorrow and the sadness that I saw in the younger actors who were about to blow, who were about to come out as this is my first production. You knew yeah. me from Shaka, the global, big CBS Showtime studios. I understood the pain in their eyes. Mm. But what I said to them was the same thing, was on my phone the whole day, I was in bed the whole day, just watching, reading the news, the bulletins from Deadline. And, yeah. and I kept saying to everybody that called me, I was like, bro, bro, think about it this way. I know, it's bad news, right? It feels bad, right? It feels horrible. We've been doing this for a year, right? I know, I get it, I get it, I get it. But imagine this. No one in the world will pay you to be in the room with those guys. You can land in LA today and go, guys, I'm in town. Those guys will give you a bedroom. They'll host you. Mm. Now those guys know you. Those guys pick up the phone and call Denzel. Those guys pick up the phone and call Oprah. Yeah. You know, I, I could name a list. But what I'm saying is, if you look at this thing half full, You've worked on a project, however much, 200 million budget, US, whatever it is. You've worked on a project so huge, with names so big, names that have serviced and catered to the audiences for years, and they now know you by name. Surely the future holds something for those who are determined. Surely it's not the end of the world. Unless the plan for the product was just to be known mm -hmm. and to blow up. <laughs> then there's different things, and then, then I can understand your pain, because then the fame might be out of the door. But if your plan is a long game, and if your plan is not a sprint, it's a marathon, mm. you understand that that moment Eight was a moment. Eight months of the year, paid probably the highest rate I've ever earned in my career. 21 years. And I think I get paid fairly well. You know, I think I've earned it. You're both <clears> busy. You know. Mm. I think I've earned it, but, and it's not about the money, but what I'm saying to you, who will pay you a check in dollars that will change your life 
and still know you by name and still be a fan of how you do your thing and still once in a while drop your message like, hey, how you doing? I see you killing it. Godspeed. Job done. Am I losing or am I winning in that scenario? Definitely. You feel me? So, so, so every African actor, actress, makeup artist, stunt, SFX that worked on that show, directly in the eye, I'm looking at you. We won. You know? Yeah. We won. It's on your CV now. Mm. Go crazy now. You know? Take it to the next thing. Yeah. And what are your thoughts actually on the current state of film and TV in South Africa? What a beautiful thing. That's how I sum up where we are. <clears throat> I say that because for years, the ingredient that is Africa has been sitting in the kitchen and nobody has been touching it for years. And now you watch TV, you watch international productions. <clears throat> and where it used to be, the Mexican feature or the Puerto Rican feature, mm. it's now the black feature, the African feature. What is it telling you? It's telling you that the tide is turning and brown is more appealing and more necessary and is new and is the fresh ingredient, which has always been there, but the world now wants to cook with us. Yeah. And Africa is, is sexy now. And Africa is, you know, if there's going to be a standout character, make them black, make them African even. You know, same as the Little, Mer Little Mermaid now. Little Mermaid. Yeah. You name it. It's an evolution. It's it's a it's a it's a turning point, right? Um, it's 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 and if you don't believe now that Africa is what we've been denied all along, we are great. Hmm. We are magical, and I'm not saying just Black African. I'm saying African people, you know, white, black, you know. But most importantly, the brown is looking amazing on screen sounding amazing on screen. You've got your dams and you, the British boys, the Brit African boys are taking over. Yeah. You know, David Kaluuya, Dams and Idris, Idris Alba, you name it, there's so many. You know, Charles Babalola. You look to, you to Idris Alba. Yeah. What, what was that experience like? I mean, wow, that must have been, I mean, what, what, what has Idris told you? That is, what advice has he given you that's stuck with you even now that you can implement to young thespians out there that want to be like you. Yeah, he didn't give me advice. He's a dope brother, he's a good man. Hmm. He didn't give me advice, but I watched him. I people watch. I, I use my eyes, I really watch people. Yeah. And, I, and at times I use what I've seen to, for characters and you'd never know it, but like I, I watch. I watched him, you know, on set we hardly spoke much, but on that set I felt like, I felt validated and I felt like <clears throat> if there was ever a sign that I needed to understand that I'm at the right place, mm. I'm not lost. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Even though I'm still hungry after I get off a set and I want to build a business or run something, <clears throat> if there was ever a sign, that was it. Watching that man work. I didn't have one line of dialogue on, on Long Walk to Freedom. Yeah, yeah. But because he said something to me, instinctively I said something back and I had a line. Like something like Siso Ilungi, so we'll, we'll fix it or something like that. But that moment, watching that man work with his, both his body doubles, his stand-ins, and just how to preserve a performance, how to save it. That guy didn't say much on set. Chaco Chaco, go to his trailer. He's carrying the story of Nelson. You could see it on his eyes every day. And just a focus. No waste of energy, even the standing, he doesn't have a, st he doesn't stand and that's mark a shot for himself. Mm. He's got guys to do that, to stand there for him, because he's the lead, he's 99% of all the shots. Yeah. So, he, him standing, half of the day is him losing energy, so he doesn't stand in, he comes in just before we do the take. Block, block, Idris, the camera's there, camera's there, camera's there, gonna walk in, speak to Mangma, and he does it. Once, twice, three times, cut, we got that. He's back in the trailer. I'm like, oh shit. When I was younger, I would have wanted to just do trailer hopping. Hey, bro. Yeah, I'm two scenes away. But he. Yeah. <laughs> so? Yeah. But enough with the trend. No, bro. You don't. Not as a leading man. Yeah. That dude taught me focus and discipline. And that is part of discipline. There's so many fun things on set, especially as an actor. So many things can catch your eye. 
You wanna chill with your beautiful co-stars. You wanna do this, you wanna check, you wanna uh, uh, uh. But the responsibility that comes with a leading role is different. Even, it's like me leaving my house knowing, fighting, like having a fight with my wife before I go to set. I'm, from, day, from that first second I'm on set, I'm struggling, I'm praying to God, I'm like, God, help me pull this weight. It's on the back of your mind as yes, well. Yes, because I can't, I need peace. Even if I'm wrong, bro, I'd even go, baby, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Bye, then I go work. Yeah. Even when I'm not wrong, at times I'm like, I need to be free, bro. I just need peace. Okay, can we just deal with this when I get home so I can do this? Mm. And whatever she says will make my day and make it easier. So what I'm saying to you is that I've seen leading men like Idris completely dominate self-discipline on set. Then after set, you're like, oh, at dinner now we're out on the streets, like we're having like a drink or they're off the next day. I'm like, oh, this is the dude. Two completely different <laughs> people. Like, you know. Yeah. Oh man, what a dude, music, oh you DJ, this what, oh yeah, oh you free, freestyle, yeah, yeah, boxing, yeah, let's go. Now it's like, there's the guy. But on that floor, bro, that guy is like when Serena walks onto the Wimbledon floor, it's Jigger coming onto the stage. It's Beyonce before she drops that whatever, mm. you know, it's Pharrell on that Louis V. Uh, stage presenting it's that moment bro and if you don't treat acting like that moment then you just there you know but if you're there like own it bro don't walk in like I'm the man but walk onto a floor bro and if it's busy if the set is loud you just chill you don't have to go guys everybody just keep it no you're wasting energy <laughs> just walk on set bro and just wait how you know your set respects you you walk on you rest in yourself, you stand there. Mm. And if you say this too loud, walk off, man. Your AD must do something about it, but if you walk on and you say nothing, your set goes from <laughs> No word said, because yeah. people understand the moment and you've helped them understand without saying a word and wasting energy. So for me, bro, goes back. Who's the product? You. You. He is the product. He is the product. She, he, she. Yo, the product, in whatever space you sit, you are the product. And by virtue of being here today, you're getting paid a daily rate, right? There's a value to it. Even if you're not, there's a value to it. So the product is here for a value exchange deal. And when we're done, that driver takes me home. Then, yeah, I'm nobody's product. I'm living life now. So, so it goes back. You are always the product. Mm -hmm. And how you earn the extra stripes of respect that the, the universe showers you with is when you go on that floor and kill it and do it like it's the first time you're doing it. And that doesn't mean you have to say anything, do anything, show off. Blah, blah. Just do what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You're not a stuntman. Don't do the stunts. Leave mm -hmm. that to stunts. But just kill what you do. You know, and I promise you, bro, the day is done. You go home and you're happy. It's just like, wow, that feels good, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when it's not like that and you're in a, on a set with different minds and different actors who are there for different reasons, it also still allows you to, in your zen meditative state, it is meditative. Yeah. It's like a zen state of discipline and control. Allow the voice of the director to rise. Allow the AD to own his floor. Like the lady, when she said, quiet on set, I stopped speaking to the brother. Allow those people to own their spaces and watch what happens. Everything sits. And if somebody is not supposed to be there, they'll show themselves. Then all I do is I just go whisper at the producer, I'm like, yo, get this guy offset. You won't know that I'm the reason you're offset. Mm -hmm. But they'll make a call, they'll be like, take everybody five minute break. Call the side, suddenly we've got a new sound guy. After lunch, what happened? It's not serious. Constantly on his phone with a boom like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 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 what do you mean, bro? I'm not, I'm not checking on my wife's messages. I know she needs me urgently, but I'm here. So, the I'm moment. In the moment. In the moment. In the moment, yeah, yeah. That's the money. The moment is the money. And when I watch myself on screen, and I can see myself, although that day was a distracting day. Uh, oh, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. You won't see it. 
I'll see it in my eyes. I'll go, mm, it's not the one. They used the wrong take, you know, but I leave it, you know. And if I'm not happy with the take, I'll go for another one because I know what it should be. So everything is about intentionality. You got to be intentional. You got, and people can feel intention. Yeah. When I touch Komoto's face to have an intimate scene, she can feel my respect on her face. She can feel that these hands are not here to just fondle. Ooh, free feels. Oh my God. <laughs> Another take, please. Nobody cares. Yeah. No, I'm not there for that. I'm there for, for these hands to move responsibly through her body. Yeah. To the tone of the character and what it needs. You know, it's, yeah. it's a science. Mm. I dare to say, it is a science. Which is why I laugh when people are like, oh my God, you're an actor. Oh, I wish. Yo, your life is nice now. <laughs> I'm like, bro. I'm like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I it's got... Like, yeah, it's that's, like, that's what they oh, bro, answer. I can act, bro. My family always tells me I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't fucking come here. I don't want to get shit once, boy. Yeah. It's like, mm. hey, okay. Yeah. It's science, bro. Yeah. Yeah, so it's science. It's like science. it is. Tabula just mentioned, it's science, guys. Yes. So I hope you guys have been learning from this conversation as well. And we're just going to go into some quick rapid fire questions. So literally, whatever's on top of your head, you just shoot. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll let you have a yeah, sip. Go. And then, uh, really, I just also want to okay. have a sip. Um, favorite South African film? I'd say Sarafina. Because of what it how it moved me as a child. Mm-hmm. You know. In favorite time, yeah, yeah, favorite's always yeah. a tricky question, but I'd say a film that really made impact, an impact on my life. Our lives as kids, not knowing what was going on around us. And suddenly this performance, this freedom is coming to more this musical, yeah. this fiery explosive young black what? who are these people you know what I mean that was the first time I think Sarafina definitely made that that super dent yeah mm. a South African film director you'd like to work with I'd like to work with Manza Duga oh. more so it's in siege more yeah I know him okay. I'm, yeah I'd like, I like him yeah. I worked with him on Shaga, he's one of the directors. Oh, he yes, directed yes, one of the yes, big scenes. Yes. I like him. I like his energy. I like his understanding of self and us. And I just like him. I like his energy and I feel like we, we owe each other one. Um, yeah, Akin is a big brother to me, Akin Omotoso. Definitely love to work with Akin. I'd love to be directed by Akin. I don't think it's happened. It happened on a series, like one or two episodes. Much younger as well, much earlier in my career. Um, and then, you know, um, sure, there's a, f- there's a lot, you know. There is a lot. There yeah, is a lot. Yeah. But I think you asked me, I must be fair, and just give you one answer. But Yeah, top yeah, of your mind. Yeah. Top of my mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and um, do you have any superstitions before you step on set? No. Nothing? No, I'm hardly superstitious. You know, I'm... I'm really in that. No, I'm not superstitious, but, uh, but I've got practices where I know if I don't do something, I'm just off-center, and it doesn't sit well with me. Like, I like to pray. Yeah. Yeah, I like to talk to God. I like to talk to myself. Um, Spiritual man. Yeah, you have to be, I think, in some way or form spiritual to do this. Yeah. You have to tap into your spirit and your soul. You have to have some sort of guards and some sort of security and some sort of barrier around. Your, I can't imagine freestyling this <laughs> of just me and my energy. How great do I think I am, bro? <laughs> Who do you think you are, bro? Like coming into this to manipulate emotion because you're great mm. at then packing it again, packing it back. No, 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 no. Some of the stuff leaves you really feeling torn, bro. Like tears don't just roll down my face. But the fact that tears can roll down my face with 20 people around me on action means I've obviously got pain somewhere in my, inside me. Mm. I've obviously got trauma somewhere inside me. Mm. I've obviously 
because I'm sourcing from somewhere. I can't say, but you understand? Yeah. Like, like if I'm being honest, bro, if I can be weak and ball like a little baby right now, it's because I'm taking it from somewhere. I'm borrowing and then I have to put it back when I'm done because it doesn't belong to this show. But I've used it for this show. Yeah. Do you understand? I've used my, I've manipulated myself. So I need to unmanipulate myself. I need spirit for that. I need mom for that. I need love for that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and well, well, actually, what's it, what, what does your mom say? Has your mom watched uh, Fatal Seduction? No, she hasn't, and she won't. Because I know, <laughs> I know, like you, you mentioned that you she know your, your wife had to like break it down to and explain to her, like, okay, myself and my wife. I just yeah, don't yeah. think she should. Yeah. I don't. She hasn't. She hasn't caught. Maybe she caught wind of it. My mom listens to the news, and I told her about it, but she doesn't watch all my shows. She, uh, yeah, there's some way where I don't like PR them to her, like. Mm. This I won't. It, if, unless it's on Ukozi FM, which is her station. If they talk about it then, then she'll be curious. Yeah. But I'm glad that there hasn't been an insane, um, you know, uh, unnecessary reaction to the sex scenes. There's respect, if anything, and I'm grateful to the audiences for that, that it reads that we're not just enjoying being naked, we're actually telling a story. Yeah. So, no, she hasn't seen it. Right. She shouldn't see it. Make sure she hasn't seen it. Yeah. You do it. Uh, we'll try. <laughs> this episode will come out in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we are looking forward to um, volume two of Fatal Seduction. Yeah. When, when that comes about, I think it's, I mean, right now Fatal Seduction is like the number two most watched show and uh, the Netflix world. show in the world. Yeah, we're hoping for number one today. Hoping yes. for number one. So hopefully, maybe it's happening right now. Maybe it's happening right now. Never know. Yeah. You never know. But two so, is yeah. great, man. Two is great. Yeah. Globally, over Globally, 70 yeah. countries. That's mm. brilliant. No, great, man. Yeah. And thank you so much for gracing us with your presence and sharing wisdom and, you know, such knowledge. And we yeah. hope that it's going to be, you know, it's going to, it's going to filter down I throughout the whole, not even the whole country, throughout the whole world to young thespians yeah. that want to, you know, go on this journey and want to be, 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 be like you. Um, be better. Or even be Forget better. Forget me. Yeah. Absolutely. Be you. Be better. Absolutely. Mm. And we hope that this conversation will really speak to them. Yeah. Um, and hopefully it can change many lives as well. You know? I think, yeah, yeah, from your lips to God's ears, to mm. the universe, you know, to the digital God ears too. Absolutely. Because, yeah. because it's, it's pointless, bro. Like, it's pointless to do it for ourselves. Mm. You know, we can chop it up all day, but somebody who does can't afford to go to varsity like I did, mm. for, or to film school like I did, needs to take this and use it as they film school, they little crash course. Now you know something you didn't know. Yeah. If that's the case, then job is done, you know. And mm -hmm. don't forget, 99% of the industry is made up of people who didn't go to film school. True. So, forget film school. Christopher Nolan didn't go to film school. Get the information. Yeah. Right. You got Facebook. You got Twitter. Now you got Threads. Now you got Instagram. You got likes. You got followers. So you got bandwidth. You got time. Yeah. Get on YouTube. Train yourself. Teach yourself. Trust me. Learn lenses. Go on YouTube. Just take a weekend, have your favorite drink, and just make your obsession lenses. By Monday, you've clocked, you've clocked the chapter of lenses. Mm. All right, empower yourself. Use the digital media space to create valuable platforms for yourself so you can unlock money. As an actor, I make more money off campaigns, of, of COVID. Guess what took care of me? Campaigns, mm. brands, brands, because yeah. I developed a valuable digital life. So what is digital? It's an extension of who you are. Tapele Mugwena, in the physical. Tapele Mugwena, in the digital. By the way things are going, the digital Tapele Mugwena is holding more monetary weight and value. Mm -hmm. value so you've got to yeah. grow that guy. Yeah. He might, you might thank him someday, but then you've got to still work on the human being. Don't lose sight of that. You know, it's an extension of who you are. Mm. That, that person can make money with you sleeping. He, my digital tabella certainly does. True. So everybody should see this life thing as a stage, a blank canvas. You decide what kind of product you are in it, and you determine how this product is consumed, and you determine who the target audience is for your product. And by all means, keep the product the product. Keep the main thing the main thing. For myself, Adrian Kale and Mr. Tulum Goya, signing out. <laughs>